X Prize because you're on on the board mm. of the X Prize. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're working on a X Prize for longevity. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Can you can you talk yeah. about uh, what, what this is and what the parameters are and how it's mm-hmm. going? Yes. Uh, so for those uh, of you who don't really know what X Prize is, so X Prize Foundation is uh, it's foundation set up in California by Peter Diamantes, a very good friend. Um, uh, inventor, entrepreneur, visionary, um, and the whole idea of um, X Prize is running global pro bono competition for different technologies and different inventions to solve world biggest problems. So what you do, you take um, a certain amount of money from sponsor, from you know, it can be from you know, million dollars, it can be. Uh, 10 million dollars, it can be 100 million dollars that we took from Elon Musk early this year for carbon removal X prize. And you just go to the world and you say, the first team who's going to solve this world, you know, big problem, uh, will get this money. And you obviously have a set of parameters, set of rules, and usually it's 200, 300, 400 teams from 50 plus countries. Uh, who are competing for this prize. And, and therefore, they're suggesting, they're developing you know, all these solutions. And uh, some of them, usually not one team, but few, uh, two or three teams uh, you know, you know, get this uh, prize in the end. So you're paying for the result. This is the beauty of the concept. But more importantly, we, we've done X prizes in so many fields like um, uh, coral restoration, um, uh, digital learning X Prize to help people uh, people in prisons and uh, uh, kids in Africa to learn Swahili and, and English without any adult help, just based on the open source application that uh, has been developed by one of the teams. Uh, Carbon removal X Prize I mentioned, uh, done by Elon Musk. Uh, sorry, with uh, his sponsorship. Um, what was yeah, like f- the first private spaceship. Uh, has been developed in the course of X Prize competition, and Richard Branson bought it, uh, and it's right now it's it it's been used as a platform for Virgin Galactic. So that's that's just amazing the outcome of uh, what has been invented before. Um, so um, H Universal X Prize is an idea that um, why don't we bring hundreds of teams all around the world with their inventions, interventions. Uh, uh, discoveries and technologies, um, and what if we can try to reverse aging processes inside our body? So the whole idea is to fight age-related diseases. So if we become younger, obviously we the the level of risk that we run in terms of these four you know killer monster diseases that uh, is lower. So that's why we've um, um, we we've developed this set of biomarkers, almost like biological clocks. You have you know, 40 plus different uh, criteria that you usually draw from the blood test. Um, and uh, well, that's, that's in a way um, uh, the biological blocks. And uh, we had a beauty and pleasure of uh, working with one of the most brilliant minds in, in this field, like with George Church with uh, David Sinclair, professor from Harvard Medical School, the author of amazing book called The Lifespan, um, with Steve Horvath, uh, Professor Steve Horvath, the man who developed uh, and invented first biological uh, clocks uh, back in 2013. And there's more and more scientists there as well. So we will finish design stage, uh, which I'm sponsoring from my personal money uh, by early next year. And uh, that's it. And I do hope that we're, we're in discussion with different sponsors. I do hope we're going to launch this competition uh, early next year. Okay. And what would the timeline be for like... So, <clears throat> because, well, the beauty of today is um, that we can look at, at biomarkers. So yeah. actually, like the, the whole intervention, you can test for like 12 months. That's mm-hmm. the current hypothesis. So it's not like the, you know, all experiments in the field of longevity and you have the group of very old people and you just sit for like 10, 15 years and wait until all of them die. 
Um, so, uh, but obviously you need a bit of preparation like before and, and after that recruitment, approval of ideas as well. So it's, uh, I, I guess we're looking at three years for the first stage. And then by the end of the first stage, it's going to be 10 uh, technologies or uh, interventions which will be picked up by um, scientific um, board for the sex prize. And then we, we're going to do much more rigorous testing with this, you know, work with these 10 teams as the second stage. That's, that sounds really interesting, I must admit. It is, yeah. 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 And it's, it's, it's just really interesting just to bring all these beautiful minds from all around the world and uh, try to solve uh, the problem of age-related diseases. Uh, it feels really good. Yes. Yeah. So the other thing that you do, or another thing that you do, right, is working with governments. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's, that's like really important because we got all the technology moving forward. But in some ways, like the, the governments are not moving at the same speed. And, and so yeah. that actually could become kind of a bottleneck. But you work with the UK government and you talked about Singapore as well. Yeah. So I'd be really interested to hear about them. And are you collaborating with uh, Professor Kennedy in Singapore? Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, <clears throat> I was speaking at one of his webinars and obviously we know um, each other with um, Brian for some time, for four years already. Um, I'm not involved in kind of Singapore program. I'm just observing this from, um, from the outside and what is done by the government of Singapore and obviously with the input of um, Professor Kennedy and his team is just really amazing. The whole, well, first of all, Singapore spends like 5% of its GDP on um, healthcare and they are number one or number two in terms of the lifespan and health span in the world. So like for comparison, US spends 18%, UK spend 8% of uh, uh, GDP on healthcare. And uh, results are pretty much different, not for UK, but for US. US is in uh, deep trouble, unfortunately. In the last few years, even pre-COVID, the average lifespan has been decreasing for most of the time. Uh, gradually by 0 0.2 uh, years uh, for every year. But still, uh, you know, I don't think we, we've seen any other developed country in the world where the average lifespan has been decreasing pre-COVID. So that's, that's a problem. And Singapore took it to a completely different level. So I'm learning a lot from them. Um, in terms of my involvement with uh, UK, I was just a member of um, UK parliamentary group on national longevity strategy. It's been two years, um, two years journey. And um, I couldn't say that um, we've developed something which, which was like super transformational uh, for, for the country. You know, overall, this whole field of, and my initial idea of working with governments around the world on, on longevity and longevity technology, um, I, I'm not satisfied with my role there and my progress there. Um, government always deals with something which is both urgent and important. So health of the nation is always important, but never urgent, probably with the exception of 2020 and, and COVID. That's it. So like there's always something different on their priority list. And that's, that's been, again, disappointing for me. And uh, uh, so I still I haven't cracked the code how to work with uh, governments all around the world to promote healthy living, recognizing the, like all of these opportunities that we have in the field of longevity science and technologies and if in a new data-driven technology-based version of medicine and what it can bring to the nations. So that's, that's unfortunate reality. I'm actually more successful with working with corporations. And again, this is pro bono. I'm doing this for free. Uh, I'm helping some of the large um, companies in Europe and in the world to create the uh, longevity at work there. Uh, corporate longevity program where they transform their offices, their factories in uh, in the environment which supports longer and healthier living. 
you know, doing using the same buckets that I explained in the beginning of our conversation, Richard, uh, mm -hmm. you know, helping people to do checkups, supporting them if they have cancer or heart disease risk, um, you know, working on the passive longevity side, which is health and safety, you know, changing their diet and bringing more healthy food to contains, vending machines, etc. You know, and um, helping people to, you know, make sure they, they walk that 10,000 steps a day and then, you know, giving them courses on, on um, smoking cessation, like mindfulness, meditation, importance of sleep, um, and helping them to, um, to do like collective uh, pro bono work and uh, giving back to society. So these things, and I've done it for a few companies and I really enjoy it because once you put it in and in, in, you know, as a priority for founder or CEO and head of people, that's it. Like the rest of the organization would need to respond. So uh, it's a little bit of stick and carrot uh, and it worked pretty well. Um, I'm actually, after the book um, publication uh, last month uh, in, in August, um, uh, it could, uh, book became very popular. So we hit Wall Street Journal, uh, bestseller list uh, USA Today, so it's become US national bestseller. Uh, some other bestsellers list that we got. I got two requests: uh, uh, one from Facebook, the other one from Amazon. Uh, and this, uh, they are the largest companies um, on earth, at least in terms of market capitalization, showing the interest in longevity at work as a program and trying to enhance the health and uh, level of happiness of their employees as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm having a call with. Uh, um, one of the head of people of one of these um, two companies this week to explain. So what's the idea behind it and how I can support their internal team as well. Usually, I mean, it, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. It's just one or two hours of my time every month. But it, it's really cool to see how tens uh, th of thousand uh, people uh, change their life and, and uh, their daily routine to become like a healthier and happier mm. version of themselves. It's really great. Yeah, that, that sounds really helpful. And you can definitely see that corporations are going to kind of move faster, that they have the ability oh, yeah, to yeah. move faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And governments. <laughs>